Hey everyone! Okay, so this video has been quite a long time coming. A lot of people ask me how I do moulds, and so instead of like trying to reply to everyone um, by comments and stuff like that in text, I thought I would do an actual video. Um, I've been meaning to do it for a while, but here we go. Um, so when I do my moulds, I have to think of a number of questions. So first, what kind of sculpt is it? So is it um, a flat bottom sculpt or does it have legs? So um, I can decide whether or not it's going to be like an open base mold like this or a closed base mold because it needs to be um, done with more complexity. Like, um, So I then have to decide whether it's going to be um, a single pour mold, um, just as it sounds like you just do it in a single pour. So for example, you take the clouds here and then you just say, okay, I didn't use a cup for, for this particular mold, but you just put a cup, cut that bit off and then pour it. And that's like a single pour. Um, sometimes you can get it out in one or you can cut it down the side. Um, or whether or not I need to make a specific two part mold. And that involves making a box and um, uh, getting it all inside. And you cast one part and then you cast the other part. So it's quite an involved process. So if you can do it in one pour, great. If you can't, then okay, well, you've got some work ahead, but um, it's usually worth it. Um, so the first major question when making a mold is where are the undercuts likely to be? So when you pour the resin down, it, it fills up. And so the thing is, like, um, if you have an undercut, it's just definitely going to get trapped air. If you don't put a vent in or uh, try and deal with it in some other way, um, you will just get an air bubble here. Um, and if anyone's been following my recent emo cloud um, debacle, you can see that um, the first pull that I did, um, it had so many undercuts that basically some of it didn't even, some of the detail didn't even cast. So I had to rethink that. So here are potentials for trapped air. So like, yes, this is like the rain cloud issue, uh, the uh, uh, the raindrop issue I was having, and um, there's lots of potential shapes. And a surprising one is that I've often had problems with even a straight um, line. You would think that it wouldn't get trapped air, but if that line isn't 100%, um, it's just, it still has potential to trap that air. Um, ways of dealing with it is um, you either make it sloped or domed or you smooth it off and that can really help. Um, if it's quite close, if the edge is quite close, then actually um, sometimes a pressure pot can deal with it, but sometimes it can't. Um, one way of doing it is um, you put a little vent going towards the body. Say this is like a hair that stuck out um, and that's the body. You can put a little cut there to just relieve the... Um, just a little slit in it, or you can tilt it. Um, a good example of that is that when I first did this, I did a closed mold and then just little vents from the feet. But because it's flat, I didn't realize that I was going to get trapped there. Um, obviously, physics and stuff, I probably should have thought of that. So in future molds, what I did was I kind of just slightly tilted it and then put the vents coming to the edge like that. And that did solve a lot of issues, so that's great. Um, and the other thing you can do is what I did with the rain, um, which is literally remove the undercuts or like rework it so that it's like um, it's more smooth to the surface. So let me show you. I don't know if you'd be able to see it very well, but for example, this one has quite like rounded edges there um, and um, this was a potential for undercuts right there and this one I smoothed off so like you can see that it's much more slopey and it didn't cause any problems at all. Oops, sorry <laughs> of course I did that um, and obviously the other potential problem with it is that even if you can't necessarily see there's a problem you get little air bubbles. I don't know if you can see them at the end. And while, yes, if it was maybe a stray one here and there, you could fill it in. But, you know, I didn't want to do that for every single raindrop. So that was the end of that conversation. So another potential 
for air pockets is um, at the bottom of details. So, for example, when I was casting this, this horn was at the bottom. Very occasionally, if I poured the resin a little bit too fast, it would get a little pocket, air pocket there. It doesn't happen that often. Um, and um, another potential is something like this, like a bottleneck. So uh, Leafy is a great example. Um, this thing is quite, uh, you know, thin here and then goes out thick. And so when I first started doing it, I would get a huge air pocket there because it just couldn't, the air bubble just couldn't escape out of the top bit. So I had to put a vent there to help it. And even then I still have problems with it. But, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> So yes, yeah, so th those are some, some solutions to think of. When you've worked out where the potential air pockets are going to be, um, so for example, with the cloud, you can see that the potential air pockets are going to be at the top here, here, and here, and, and there. So I had to decide where I was going to put those vents. The best place to put them is where it breaks on the seam. It is possible to do a vent or um, a pour hole or whatever it is um, that goes opposite or that isn't on the seam. But I tell you, it's really difficult. And if you can plan your your moulds to go with the seam for the vents, it's much better. So if you can see, yeah, having a hole there. So it is possible to do it this way around. So just say instead of um, pouring, it out the, uh, pouring it down into the top there, you could actually pour it down this way if you wanted to but then um, because the seam really does have to go over this way it's not very good to have the seam go this way across it does make sense to have the seam go this way um, you'd have to put the hole in before you do the mold so you would have to put a little spout coming out of here attached to this then put it in the mold box and then fill the silicon but I really don't advise it if you are determined to do it, make sure you don't create a plug. So if you ha you still have to be able to pull it out. So making it straight is much better. But if you then add um, a pour cup at the top, you're just kind of plugging it in and you'll never be able to get it out unless you cut that bit there. But again, it's very difficult to do any work on your molds that isn't open, in uh, that is accessible. So... Draffy was a really good example of um, having to think about seams that aren't, uh, I mean, vents that aren't on the seam. So what I did instead, of, like, I just totally forgot this. I mean, so I just didn't want to have to do an inbuilt vent into my pour. So I personally thought that the best solution was to do a multi-part. So that way... I don't have to deal with this coming out there and it's actually much easier it's even easier to paint here and i actually don't mind it the other option that i could have had was to make a three-part or more than three-part mold um again it's very difficult and i've only got one of those so leafy actually was a three-part mold so as you can see this part here needed vents here here, here, here. And so if I stick it there, it's getting a bit old now, <laughs> just ignore it. <laughs> um, you can see that the um, the vents are coming out of there and there and then it goes all the way around and then down into here, as you can see. So it goes all the way down and it comes out here. Um, I used to have problems with the bottom of the face and um, this is an example also of where the vent isn't with the seam, so I had to cut in. I, I put wire there, but I still had to trim it. I had to cut it going down from each leg. It was very awkward. Um, again, I try not, I don't recommend it, but it was much easier than making it a four-part mould. Um, but I'm very proud of this mould, actually. <laughs> so It was actually when I first started using uh, Smooth On products. Okay. And so once, uh, oh yeah, the other thing that's really important is that you want to try not to do your seams over important details. So if you can avoid it, try not to go over faces or really small details that are really important at the front and stuff like that. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit unavoidable, 
But for example, it made no sense to do the seam across here. Um, because also when you do it on detail, it's really hard. Like you have to sand it off. The the um, And doing it over detail is just going to cause you so much heartache, I promise. <laughs> so yeah, so... Um, yeah, just be careful of the details and where you choose to put your seams, but it's all a bit of a compromise often. And then finally, um, you have to make the box itself. So, uh, not well, the mold, I call it a mold box, but I don't know what other people call it. So, um, for two part molds, I'll make a box up, and um, you can either that some people call them keys and some people call them registration marks. So, it's basically these bits. And what these are doing is stopping it from sliding around. So silicon really is quite slippy. Um, and so the last thing you want to do is have it slip um, because it, it really puts a horrible um, line in your work and it's very hard to sand out. So the better your keys can be, actually, the better it will it will come out and the less work you'll have to do sanding it. I promise you sanding is my least favourite thing to do in the world. <laughs> so... <laughs> Try and avoid it. Um, when I do keys, I like to do keys in both directions. So as you can see, I have a key coming out up and then I use like um, a tool and then press down into it as well. So that it's so it's like interlocking better. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter. I see some people don't put it in both directions. It's not really a problem. Um, I also like to do big ones on the outside medium ones kind of around and then really small ones around it uh, to get the detail. Um, I find that doing smaller ones means that it doesn't disturb the edge of the mold. There is actually no right or wrong way of making keys. Some people use lines or big boxes and um, squares and you know it doesn't matter the shape as long as it it fits together nicely and um, as long as it doesn't affect your curing of your resin so like you don't have to do it the way I did it. Um, but just so you know, I, I use um, these like acorn nut hex nut thins. And then I just use a tool, um, like I said before, just to push it in like that way. Now, if you're doing a one part mould, um, the best thing to do, uh, because if you can't pull it, like thankfully with the rain, I could actually just pull it out. Um, there were, it, it didn't require any seam whatsoever, which is great. However, um, for example, with, with Draffy Pup, trying to pull that out, obviously you can't because of this bit. So it definitely needed to be cut into. And I take the same principle as the moulds, uh, the two-part moulds. So I do big cuts on the outside, going working in, and then like very small cuts on the inside. And so let me show you here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but like, yeah, it's very, it's very thin cuts on the inside and then on the outside it's more uh, larger ones that kind of help it grip together. And it looks really messy, but actually it's better to be a little bit messy because it just gives it extra grip, it just gives it extra um, registration marks to hang on to. Um, and as you can see, it like doesn't move that much at all yeah so yeah it doesn't move that much um i was quite happy with this cut it was actually one of the better ones i did um and i really really enjoy doing one part molds now because um i've got a great tool that helps me so they're these retractors because it actually can be quite hard to open the mold so you just stick it in and then you like cut it like that. Um, it's still tricky, but it makes it a lot more easy. Um, and yeah, so basically that's it. Um, that's how I plan molds. Um, and then there are two other, after this, there are two other questions that I do ask myself that's very important. So let me show you this monster. This is my big unicorn mold. I'll open it just so you can, just for funsies. Now, this is the biggest mould that I can literally fit in my pressure pot. So you actually do have to consider how big your pressure pot is. And if you're like me, who only has a small one for home use, um, if it exceeds 
the if it exceeds the pressure part then you have to decide whether or not you're going to break that down into smaller um into into smaller parts some people do that for that very reason <laughs> yeah but yeah don't, don't don't make the mistake of making it so big that it won't fit in your pot um, and then the last thing you have to decide is whether or not you're actually just going to redesign the whole mold or redesign the sculpt itself so for the rain cloud I went back to the drawing board and was like right it needs to be redesigned otherwise it's going to make my life misery if I keep having to cast it and it's not working um, but I also redesigned Leafy the first version of Leafy had very, very small leaves, more like natural looking leaves, but they were extremely undercut. And even when I made this version, um, it originally slopes in more. And so I actually had to sand every single leaf to make sure that it didn't create an undercut. And even, one, even when I did that, I still have some issues here because of the fact that um, this still creates an undercut. But I've had, sometimes it, it, puts a little bit of air bubbles and sometimes it doesn't but I just have to accept the fact that with this design no matter what angle I did it there was going to be possibly an undercut created somewhere so I just accepted that as as a compromise but it was worth it <laughs> anyway um, I hope that was helpful for everyone and I'm sorry if this was a super super long video um, anyway thank you so much and take care and happy casting bye